Now, in 2011, 840 million people in the world were actually undernourished just in basic calories, never mind some of the, uh, you know, the good nutrition side. Uh, 300 million of those people were in South Asia, but the higher percentage rate was actually in sub-Saharan Africa. But of course, the interesting thing about all of that is, at this moment, we have enough food in the world to feed everybody. It is just not distributed well. And the question is, what is going to happen to food production in a climate change world? Once you get over three degrees and into four degrees warming, um, actually, we are all in problems. You know, the view is that there is no way that we will be able to get the food production we want if there is that degree of global warming. For farmers in the poorest countries, climate change has happened. It's not that it's you know, just beginning to happen as we're seeing here. It has happened. People don't know when rains are coming because often rains come completely unpredictably, not when they used to. They may plant things, but they'll get washed away. The, the commonest phrase that I, ever, I heard in, in my Oxfam travels in the last five years was basically people saying, the seasons have changed and we don't know what's happening and we don't know why. And it's that uncertainty which makes farming in the developing countries really, really very difficult. Who controls the global food system? And when you start doing the analysis, you start seeing just how much power is concentrated in a very small number of people's hands. And I just, I don't want you to read the whole lot, just take that top um, weighted um, uh, sort of yellow piece. You've got one and a half billion small, uh, billion farmers on one side but a very small number of companies who are doing all the inputs into all the farming of the world. Very, very four firms, basically, who control all the inputs from seeds uh, and fertilizers. Similarly, you go across there to the traders and the processors, and you've got three companies who actually hold all the grain of the world. Now, that doesn't feel to me ever so healthy. This is the donut. The issue is we all have to live within the donut. We have to make sure that we don't, as a whole, global population breach these boundaries and at the same time we have to make sure people are able to reach those absolute minimum that social foundation that we have what I hope you'll go away from here from is real fire in your belly gate scholars are global leaders who are going to lead the way in the future you like all, all of us who have tried to go before have got a very big task on our hands about dealing with climate change and I hope I'll go, go out from here with you feeling that you really do want to do something about this, not least in 2015 when the global negotiations will be on again in Paris to try to get a global deal for climate change. Mm -hmm.